This is Tom Bernanke, and today I'm going over the top 15 skin symptoms that could indicate you're a pre-diabetic or diabetic. This is very important to watch this all the way through. These are some huge tips, and we're starting now. I am part of the Michigan famous Grunberger Diabetes Institute. So we have five well-known diabetic only specialists that lecture all around the world. If you are a diabetic in the Michigan area, we're the people to come see and we'd love to take care of you. So I provide the foot care, the wound care in this clinic and you can come down to our clinic and get your blood flow, your foot care, and your diabetes seen by some great world-class specialists. Make sure to watch all the way through and comment if you have any of these or if there's something I got wrong. We're gonna start with number one. Do you have yellow, reddish, or brown patches on your skin, specifically on your shins? This is called Lipotica necrobiosis. These bumps, the cause is unknown. They have active and inactive stages, and this is associated with diabetes. These are big papules, plaques, or nodules. They don't have to hurt. About 65 plus percent of the time, they're associated with diabetes or pre-diabetes. If you have these, there's a good chance that this might be a skin sign that you have. Even though they don't hurt, they do have a gleaming porcelain-like finish, so they're shinier on the edges. If you have these, make sure to give your internal medicine doctor, your primary care doctor a call and see if you should get evaluated for diabetes. Number two, do you have darker areas of the skin that feel like velvet? This is usually in folds and creases. They appear in the armpits, the groin, and the back of the neck. They develop slowly. If you have this, it's called acanthosis nigricans. These can be itchy. They could have an odor. They could be associated with a lot of skin tags in the area. This is most likely caused by insulin resistance. Most people with acanthosis nigricans have become resistant to insulin. This can lead to type 2 diabetes. This can also be related to certain drug supplements like high dose niacin, birth control pills, prednisones, and corticosteroids. Anything that basically shoots up your sugar and creates insulin resist. If you have these thick velvety patches in your skin creases, go see your primary care doctor because you might have diabetes there. Shin spots. Do you have shin spots? They're brown. They could be dark. They look like bruises. This is called diabetic dermopathy. These are not aging spots. They look like aging spots. They can last permanently if not taken care of. This is related to insulin resistance and this is something that's a sign that you wanna get your legs taken care of. Catch it earlier rather than later. Diabetes can be reversed and you can prevent these more serious symptoms. Skin tags. A lot of skin tags generally link towards type 2 diabetes. One or two skin tags, not a huge deal, but if you have them everywhere, I have some of my patients that are uncontrolled diabetes, like I mean everywhere. They're like behind the neck, in skin folds, eyelids, neck, armpits, groin, and they're embarrassed about these, so they never get taken care of. If you have this, come get taken care of. As your diabetes gets better, these stop popping up as much. Skin tags are usually in areas that rub together, such as the neck, armpit, and groin. Here you can see an armpit and how many skin tags develop there. And it's aggravated by clothes, jewelry, so consider that. In 2012, it showed that it's not associated with HPV. And as a result, it's not shown to be cancerous. This means it's a benign lesion, so you can see the cross section here of a skin tag attached to the normal skin. Nothing to worry about but it is associated with high insulin levels and diabetes, so go get checked out. Xanthalasma, this is cholesterol on the eyelid. This could be a sign of heart disease, atherosclerosis. This means your cholesterol is too high, it's also related to diabetes. Give your doctor a call, get that taken care of. Improve your diet, get some supplementation. If you have hard, thickening skin, if your fingers have a hard time bending, if your arms have a hard time bending, if you can't bend over and touch your toes, so you can see right here, I'm trying to bend over to touch my toes, this could be sclerosis. If this hard thickening skin happens, you could have tight waxy skins. It could feel like your fingertips have pebbles. There's less sensation. It could be in your forearms, shoulders, neck. This is more likely to be in diabetes. The number one treatment for something like this is control your diabetes. If your blood sugar and your hemoglobin A1C are high, then simply getting that down does lead to improvement.
exercise, physical therapy, definitely loosens up that skin over time. This can be something that can be improved and reversed. We also uh, go over supplements like alpha lipoic acid, B vitamins, magnesium, vitamin D, these things can all help. And we have videos on our favorite diabetic supplements below. Don't worry, this isn't something we're trying to sell you. These are all things you can get on your own for a low, low cost. What about an outbreak of small, reddish, yellow bumps? When you pop them like a little pimple, if you use your thumbs and pop them, a little bit of yellow fat comes out of there. That's called eruptive xanthomatosis. These may be skin toned pink, red, brown, yellow, or a mixture of colors. They look like pimples, but when you pop them, there's fat inside there. So it's almost like yellow goo. They can look shiny or waxy, or they might not hurt at all. For a lot of diabetics, they might not hurt at all. These are most common around the butt, so your buttocks, the back of your knees, your legs, your feet. If your diabetes is controlled, these go away pretty quickly and your skin starts to get better. This is the beauty of the majority of these conditions. Once you get the proper treatment, take the proper supplements, control your diet, these go away pretty quickly. The, I see patients all the time with like horrible, nasty skin conditions that they're embarrassed to show anybody, but that's the problem, you're waiting too long. So if you have any relatives or family members, make sure to check on them and send them this video or send them to a specialist. So we are in a war against diabetes. It is insane that this disease exists. It's getting worse every year in America and we have to rise up and stop diabetes. This is one of the single biggest issues besides heart disease in America right now and soon around the world. This is an extremely common one though. Do you have dry skin, scaly patches, thick dry skin? I see this in almost all diabetes on the bottom of the feet, heels, corns, calluses. This is related to diabetes, poor circulation. You're not getting the moisture down to your feet. You could develop stiff scar tissue, almost like contractures. So your toes are bent, your fingers have a hard time bending. It hurts to walk on these. Podiatrists can really help. The beauty is almost every insurance in America covers these extremely well because insurances have learned that going to see a podiatrist saves them billions of dollars, billions and billions of dollars. People are afraid to go to get their feet taken care of because they think it's gross. It's not gross, I'm telling you. We see this all the time. And you could basically save your lifetime mobility. It's ridiculous how many patients come in and with a simple visit, they start walking. They say, this is the best I've felt in 20 years. Come see us, it's covered. Do you have raised lumps that are red on the skin? So these are like quarter or large dollar sized plaques and lumps. These are called granuloma annulare. These are not directly linked to diabetes, but they're much more common in diabetes. I won't spend too much time on this because this is like 1% of diabetics. A ton of people, it's a little bit more rare. If you have this, it's more likely to be associated with diabetes. Are your toes stiff? Do you have toes that are curling? Do you have really tight ankles, really tight knees, tight hips? With diabetes, you're much more likely to get stiff tendons, stiff ligaments, and muscles. If you have stiffness associated with this, you're gonna get sore in your joints. The joints will get swollen. This this is related to diabetes. Getting that blood sugar down, physical therapy, great supplements, you know, seeing a specialist, getting your diabetes can really help. Do you have poor sensation to your fingertips, your toe tips, numbness, shiny, see-through skin? If you have that numbness and pain in your toes, as well as those skin changes, this could be peripheral neuropathy. Now, peripheral neuropathy is due to increased blood sugars for long periods of time. The nerve fibers to your skin, called your C fibers, and your nerves in general just don't work as blood vessels, don't supply as much oxygen. And the good news is for the vast majority of my patients, when the blood sugar levels and the supplements and everything start to get better, people's sensation generally does return. And also as a podiatrist, I do a full biomechanical exam. So I check your back, your hips, your knees, your feet, and check where you're tight. Because just like you can get carpal tunnel of your wrist, you can get five major compression sites throughout your legs, sciatica behind your knee, on the outside of your knee, 
on the inside of your ankle, the bottom of your foot, and the ball of your foot. Very, very common. Do you have blisters? They look like friction blisters. They might not hurt, but little bubbles. Huge blisters on your hands, feet, and leg. They're usually not painful. This is called bullosis diabetic corum, or for plural, diabetic bulla. If you have these, it's not quite an emergency, but it could easily become an emergency. These are fluid-filled blisters. Don't pop these. That skin protects you. If these pop, bacteria could get in there and cause an infection. This is one of the reasons I see a lot of infections and people eventually lose their toes or feet in extreme cases. So 95% of the time this is around the feet, around ingrown toenails, around the bottom of the foot from pressure. Do you have red and thin skin on your toes and feet? We call this atrophic skin. With worsening diabetes, your blood vessels get clamped and more narrow. This is called atherosclerosis or arteriosclerosis. Not only is your heart not working as well, but there's not as good a blood flow down to your toes. Your toes get shiny and red. What you can do is try squeezing your toe from top to bottom. If it turns white, it should refill very quickly. But if it takes more than two, three seconds to refill, this could be poor blood flow. This could have a harder time healing. So if you have cuts, bruises that don't get better, this is probably related to your diabetes. Skin infections. Are you prone to slow healing cuts, redness, stuff that should be sore but isn't? So red, hot, swollen, uncomfortable, itchy rash and blisters, scaly skin. These are most common around the toes, toenails, and feet. When I look at the hospital list, say there's 100 patients in the local hospital I'm at, sometimes like 10 to 15 patients are there for foot problems with foot infections. These could lead to pus coming out of there. Because there's poor blood flow and poor sensation, these could lead to amputations, the need for antibiotics. Call your podiatrist immediately if you're having these problems. It's so easy to catch these early. It's just an office visit. This stuff is always covered. Foot care is always covered. This can lead to easy improvements. And on that note, ingrown toenails, corns, calluses, hard, thick skin, this is all also related to diabetes. And it's all covered. If you have insurance, it's always covered for you. And open wounds and sores, deep ulcers, that's when it starts to get serious. I'll give some tips at the end. These can be complicated. Infections can get down to the bones, the tendons. This is an emergency. Call your podiatrist immediately and get taken care of. Another skin sign is, Lack of hair growth on the feet, the legs, the hair. For example, I have hair on my feet and my toes. You probably did too when you were younger, but now as you get into your 50s, 60s, 70s, or even younger with severe diabetes, this poor hair growth means less blood flow and less nutrition is getting down to your feet and your legs. See a podiatrist, we do blood flow testing, nerve testing, we make sure the nutrients are getting down. We would actually check the pulses. So for your posterior tibial artery, your anterior tibial artery, if it's a bounding pulse, it's probably normal. If it's hardly beating at all, then it's probably some blockage. And how quickly do your toes refill? We can check that with a computer and monitor it. And the trick with this is if you reach certain values, we can run more advanced tests to try and see exactly where that blockage is. And this is a test called an arterial Doppler. We compare how strong your pulses are in your feet compared to the rest of your body. That might then let us take some toe pressures to see, hey, is there very little blood flow coming down? We could take arterial Dopplers to find out where those blockages potentially are and see that on waveform. And that could then help plan procedures such as taking a 3D angiogram. Essentially, this is dye that's injected into your vessels and you can see where the blockages actually take place. This would help both us and the vascular surgeon coordinate which arteries are blocked, which ones are narrowed, and where do we need more blood flow. So for example, this is a foot. You could see that this particular patient can have some narrowed vessels as you come down to the feet. This could cause cold toes and lead to the pain and ulcers that they are having. Sir, every insurance covers diabetic care because it saves insurances and the healthcare system so much money. And you could realistically come as frequently as you want to if you have serious problems. So you can get foot care, toenail care, Toenail fungus care, callus care. Fungus is related to diabetes as well. The more fungus you have, so that's a bonus number 16. The more fungus you have, the more diabetes you're going to likely have. I have some great home remedy guides on foot fungus 
and toenail fungus. Where I go into this in more depth, all these things are covered. We can trim up your nails in one appointment. We can get you looking good. 99% of the time, we get the majority of that fungus out of there. On the first appointment, you don't need to take dangerous drugs. We perform callus care. We'll clean up the dead, dry skin. We'll make sure there's no cracks. We'll assess your blood flow. We'll assess your nerve function for your peripheral neuropathy. And I'll assess your biomechanics too. Your hips, your lower backs, your knees, your calf muscles. This is all related to diabetes. And the more you can correct that stuff, the more you're gonna move, the more you're exercising, the more your blood's circulating, and the more you get rid of diabetes. This will help your health overall. People with high glucose levels tend to have dry skin. This skin tends to crack. You want to avoid very hot baths and showers if your skin is dry, don't soak it in hot water. Use lukewarm water. I'm a big fan of Epsom salt bath. You can put apple cider vinegar in there. You can put some Listerine in there as a home remedy. And what this will do, this will soften up the skin because that salt will get into the dead dry skin. Then you can kind of clean it off. Be careful with pumice stones and those grinders so you don't cut yourself, but they can generally work well. Apply lotions. You don't need expensive stuff. There's two types. There's lotion, which is water-based, and then there's creams. Creams are what you wanna use for the foot. In cold weather and winter, there's less moisture in the air. You're moving around less, so you want more moisturizer on your feet. If you get cuts, treat them right away. So if you get those blisters or cuts, you need to buy something like Neosporin or triple antibiotic ointment. Put a Band-Aid on there. Come see a podiatrist very quickly. During cold, dry winter months, a humidifier can help. Bathe less during the winter because that cleans off the natural oil off your skin and can lead to cuts and dryness. You want to apply moisturizers afterwards. You want to use mild shampoos, mild soaps, so moisturizing soaps specifically. You want to wear slippers at home. I have some, a lot of shoe guides down at the bottom. You don't want to walk around barefoot at the same time. If you're getting any of those, some of them you just have to see a diabetic specialist or a podiatrist for. Some you can take care of at home. If that helped, I have a video right here about our top supplements that you wanna take for diabetes. And we also have guides on the top foods you wanna take for your diabetes. Thank you. And share this if this helped and help your family members.